Well, look what's back in the shop. This is that Pharmatec uh, G372 XT, which has been modified thoroughly. And muffler rattled apart a little bit. So we're going to have to repair that. So it's been out for a couple of months, you know. And at least nothing that I know of internally has come apart. I guess that's kind of a victory in itself, isn't it? So this was somebody's field repair. <laughs> you know who you are. But let's see if we can't just get another bracket on here and get right back out in the field. Just hope that the holes for the muffler on the cylinder didn't get stripped out or something like that. There's your Chicon muffle right there. So I'm going to guess there isn't a whole lot I can do to make this work. Yeah. So things are holding up. From that perspective, I'm just going to have to make another muffle, that's all. And none of those threads are stripped out, so from that perspective, we've done good. This is from a different vendor. The same vendor that sold the original saw, I believe, is the source of this thing right here. I've never seen that happen with the other aftermarket mufflers I've modded. Just this one. The modded cylinder and the piston are holding out pretty good. The crank and cases are holding out to this point, from what I can tell. It's got an OEM ignition, but it's got their carburetor that came on it. And it's got an OEM handle. I think if you... Go back in my videos back in 2019, I guess it was, is when I built that saw. See, this is the typical Farmer Tech muffler. It doesn't have any of that folded over stuff at all. You know, it's definitely a different supplier. And uh, I've used these quite a bit, you know, and they haven't failed. So I think this one here is going to get another tube. Well, a little bit of an update, I think, on the G372 XT that I had built back in 2019. I've had it since 2018. It was one of the first ones. And I had a lot of problems. This is an OEM tank handle because a square blocky one that came with it just simply didn't work. Throttle was sticking, just a bunch of stuff. It just wasn't a useful handle. Spring rates were off on the 85, just a whole bunch of issues. Putting on a used tank handle from an x torque solved a lot of those issues. Throttle cable works now and the anti-vibe springs are the right tension and all that. And then I couldn't get it to run. This is a new OEM ignition system which sits on it right now and that solved those issues. And I eventually tore it apart and did my typical x torque mods, gutting the uh, filter holder, intake boot, Intake port on the cylinder has been modified, things like that. And I had done this muffler mod. I ran it for, I don't know, a year maybe, on and off, part of my firewood operation. And then I gave it off to a logger who's been running it full time now for a little while, a couple of months. Brought it back saying, hey, it's loud. Muffler's loose, can't tighten it up anymore. And it won't shut off. So I built that muffler. I think it came out pretty nice actually. And the difference between the Farmer Tech muffler that I used as a base for that one and the piece that came off is actually pretty substantial. You can see it in the back. I mean that stuff there just rattled right out of there. Now, one of the points I've made over and over and over again is the G372XT and XP variants sold through Farmatech. 
are sourced from a different vendor than the G372 and also the kits. And I got to tell you that the kits are better than this and so is the G372 in terms of overall quality. The handle that they sell independently through PharmaTech and the one that's on the G372, not the XT or the XP, just a, just a straight G372 is a better handle. I've made that point. And, I mean, there's a few other things I went through, but finally got it running, and now it runs strong. It's been a good saw. Now, to the credit of this saw, once I got through ignition, modifying the intake and stuff like that so it would run, tank handle, it actually works pretty good. You know, this saw here is a strong saw. Easily pulls a 24-inch bar in hardwood. And it's been used as a felling saw and a bucking saw, doing exactly that because it makes it, it makes plenty of power. One of the things I wanted to make a little note of: these are details, but these details add up. This is one of the aftermarket filters that came with the saw, but also seem to be pretty common from the aftermarket, and they work. I don't know if you can see inside there. I don't know if the light will let you, but this was packed in dust. And I blew a lot of it out, as you can probably tell. But the takeaway I found was that this filter is actually doing a decent job. That's nice. And plus, it's not getting in. Even though you can see it around the edge there, it's really not getting into the saw. So that's good. That's a relief. These are a whole lot cheaper than the OEM versions of the same thing. Nice to know that something you can buy aftermarket actually is going to work pretty well. And I guess there's a lot of some things that do. I want to make the point that the oiler hasn't failed, crank, piston, cylinder, none of that stuff has failed. And to this point in time, the, the cases and the bearings haven't failed. So I would say that that's a success to this point in time. Okay. Now, if you remember, the same guy killed a highway build on an aftermarket short block in a matter of four to six months. It was done. Beat the bearings out. So we'll see what this looks like towards the middle of the summer, late summer. If this thing can last until July, it will have beat the reliability and the longevity of the highway hot rod build that I had given to the same guy to run for a while. And uh, I would make another point is he really likes the saw. After we did the mods to the intake, I mean it runs really good, it idles really nice. It's not a fuel hog, which is a surprise. And it makes good, solid power. So as a work saw, um, the way it operates to this point in time, it's a success. They like it. They want it back. This is an update. We will see over time if the longevity is there. Oh, by the way, that's OEM too, this handle. There's a lot of things I had to change. Handle is OEM. Tank is OEM. Ignition is OEM. Gutted filter holder, left the divider in the carburetor, gutted the intake boot, and did my standard X torque mods to the cylinder. It's on there with no base gasket to lower the cylinder just a little bit. And muffler mod. That's where we sit right now with the saw. Pretty much the same thing I would do to a standard X torque to turn it into a little bit snappier work saw. And the reason I started doing those intakes was I found that it got rid of that pooling of the gas in the intake boot that the standard x torques had for a while. They've beat that now, but in the beginning they had problems with idling and things like that. And after I'd done that intake mod to them, they ran stronger and they idled better. And of course the other thing I like about what I do there is you no longer have just straight air coming in that one passage and washing the back of the piston. It's getting a full load of gas, oil, fuel mix. So there's better lubrication on the intake side of the piston. So anyway, short update. I'll post this up because this saw right here is beating the odds and the guy who's running it loves it. And isn't that the definition of win? And if it can do that for a period of time, that's a wild success. 
They don't, it's not going to beat my 660s, I don't believe. They lasted a long time. Some of them are still in service after, what, four or five years. But this one here has got a few months on it, and I've had it for a year or so, so we're beginning to add up the time. And uh, Maybe what I say is these are a good place to start for building a work saw. If you don't mind doing the work that I did, and not expecting it to run really clean right out of the box. I think that's where I am with those right now. It's, it's a good starting point. Cheap, you know, tapestry to paint on to build yourself a cool work saw. I'd say that's how I characterize it. Saw is running good, even in the cold temperatures. That's good. Now the kill switch is now working. The other one was physically coming apart, and uh, so that's the other piece of the original saw that I've now replaced is the kill switch. And I have to get the tank vent line down in there and on the tank. There it goes. You see that bevel right there? That allows it to go in where the other handle doesn't have that. It makes it virtually impossible to do this as easily as that. Do notice that the plastic, the little notch right there, has eaten into the the insulation. One of the things I do when that works, I don't know if you've noticed, I did it on this one too, is I, I cut off the corners of those fins to give a little more clearance for the plug wire. And I believe that was probably a good move on this saw. That's been hitting the chain. See that? Got bent. These are definitely not as strong as the standard ones. That's been into the chain. That's passed. I wouldn't put that back in. And get this thing back together and I think it's ready to go back into service.
came out of its thing. I'm going to have to go mess with that. sound of that better. So now I think the saw is better ready to go back in the service. Kill switch works. Little tweak on the throttle, throttle cable. Put a bar and chain back on it. Different uh, sprocket because that one was wore out. Different muffler because that one was wore out in a month. These have turned out to be a very good low cost option. And uh, he's been running these now for a couple of years. These VersaCuts. And they're lasting, is the point. Is they last quite well. And he doesn't miss the fact that we don't have to change the tip from time to time. Because these bars don't cost much up front, you know what I'm saying? So basically when he's done, he just tosses them. But they're lasting, is the thing. They're lasting quite, quite well. You can see where they're hardened right along here. You see that discoloration? Probably inductance is hardened right along the edge. But I think these work good. They're a little bit lighter than the standard solid bars. Uh, they cost less. This is their low cost bar, the VersaCut. Aluminum core, where basically you have the steel, aluminum steel sandwich. And uh, the tips are holding up to his style of logging, which is uh, bore cutting everything. These bars get bore cut a lot. And those tips are holding up fine. Whereas the uh, Zamara based bars, they didn't hold up at all. So I recommend these, especially for a farmer, farmer or a homeowner who doesn't really want to change tips anyway. But this is a guy who's a logger who's adopted these because they're a little bit lighter. He's getting a little bit older. And that lightweight matters to him. You know? Should have done with the bar off. That's on now. Let's give it a shot and see what it does. At least it won't be peeing bar oil all over my table. Clean didn't shut it off. It oils like a crazy thing, so the bar oiler is working fine. So I think that's a good update. I think this saw to this point in time is proof that they can be turned into a work saw. I'm not going to argue the cost. I'm just going to show you what I've done. You can go back to the videos and see exactly what's been done on this saw. So that's a success. Moving on to these.